A warm welcome to day three of ARM Summit 2022. This is a very interesting track which we are now starting, and it is a track where we explain more details about transition to SAP Cloud ALM. We are starting with Must Know, um, presented by Ben and myself. Um, after us, there will be presentations on more details in implementation, specifically how you move solution documentation and test cases from Solution Manager over to Cloud ALM, what are our plans, what are our ambitions. There is also a smaller functional overview related to build in that second session of that track. The third uh, session in that track will then in detail compare the functionalities in um, operations of Cloud ALM and SAP Solution Manager. So where are the similar capabilities and where are the differences? Uh, there is no focus in that operation session, the third session, on uh, the real selective data transfer for the simple reasons that we will not offer it. Um, so we will focus uh, data transfer to the implementation part. And then we have the fourth session, and that fourth session will talk about how we support you in the transition. Specifically, Gustavo Kunz will show the readiness check um, that will support you in that transition. Okay. I'll start, um, okay, you, you know that stuff. I'll start with um, two slides that I already presented on the keynote, um, just to wrap us up. Uh, why are we talking about transition? Um, we are talking about it because there is the mainstream maintenance end of SAP Solution Manager 7.2 end of 2027, because it is dependent on the business suite, and that's what the business suite is actually um, supposing us to do. Uh, when you're not ready with your ECC transformation, you can prolong maintenance for an additional three years, that also prolongs solution manager for the implementation part only for an additional three years. Um, and um, the two announcements that we made uh, on the first day, was actually that there is no further release planned on 7.2 and that we are also not planning any other um, on-prem product in the ALM portfolio, which practically means that if you want, uh, if, if you cannot accept the restrictions of customer-specific maintenance, yeah, um, then uh, you need to have an alternative to SAP Solution Manager. And uh, the only alternative that we have, which is a full suite ALM solution, is actually SAP Cloud ALM. Um, yeah, and then obviously every customer asks us, how about functional comparisons? Is it ready um, from the functional side? And how do I transition? How do you support me? And that's why we have that whole track lined up for you. By the way, um, who was, so, who, um, as we the first time yeah, uh, said, there, are, there is no further release coming up and there are no further on-prem products planned. Uh, was there anyone who was surprised by that announcement? Okay. So either you are shy and not uh, showing up hands, <laughs> or um, we just said what everyone anyway had already alluded to. Now, um, on the previous slide, you, you saw that statement um, yes, Solution Manager 7.2 will be in other maintenance options even after um, 2030, um, but in customer-specific maintenance. And customer-specific maintenance is a concept that exists for all products of SAP in on-prem world. Yeah? So it's nothing specific to Solution Manager. And there's one famous note, that is this note uh, 52025. Okay, <laughs> um, and um, this exactly describes the restrictions that we that apply in customer-specific maintenance. But there is also a summary by our maintenance go-to-market friends, um, which explains the restrictions. It's basically a summary uh, of the key aspects of customer-specific maintenance. So there are. Uh, there is no delivery of support packages anymore. There is no guarantee for technological updates that specifically refers to the Java stack where, on which uh, SAP Solution Manager um, is also based. 
Um, and we have, uh, we are actually running out of uh, um, maintenance also uh, from the JVM side, and that is uh, because uh, Oracle Sun, um, that provides the Java engine, um, does not support that release anymore, right? So this is meant with technological updates, yeah, cannot be guaranteed anymore. I can tell you they are not there anymore as of 2030. Um, also, I mean, we are doing still best can do support, yeah? We'll still pick up the phone and, and try to help you, yeah? But we can formalistically not commit the correctness of the system. And, and I think that is the, the, the most severe restriction. Now you can say, oh, no, not a problem, because that's so, uh, it's software that has been worked so long, right? It will also work for another few years. But then comes the next issue, right? What about security? Yeah. Um, we are also not getting security updates anymore from the vendors uh, that need to back us up. Um, and then you might also run into an issue here. Formalistically, we cannot even commit that. Yeah? Usually, we overcommit, we overdeliver. We are trying still to help, yeah? but um, there is no guarantee. And I think that's pretty tough, especially if you're using um, ALM in a rather central mission critical sense. And that puts all the urgency on the transition. Urgency is relative. I mean, there is still time <laughs> um, until uh, longest 2030. Um, but I know that for a lot of large customers, that uh, date 2027 or 2030 feels like tomorrow. All right. Um, and then on the ALM strategy, we have a clear alternative. That is uh, SAP Cloud ALM. It is designed for the new set of solutions, including S4 HALA deployments. Um, we have uh, the attractiveness strategy, meaning we are not aiming at feature parity, but we want to still provide the ALM that you need for your to today's and tomorrow's landscapes. It's attractive from a cost of operation, maintenance perspective. From a functional perspective, you will see that also in the next two presentations, from the perspective of ease of use, um, from the perspective that we also really support today's customer landscapes yeah, that uh, we might consider as legacy but still are out there for many more years, yeah? like the business suite, like PW, like P IPO. PIPO we support also for, with integration into exception monitoring. So these are ABAP stacks that are still supported. The non-ABAP stacks, you will see that also from Ben, uh, are not supported in Cloud ALM because um, we don't want to introduce an agent concept into Cloud ALM and add this complexity. And we provide transition support, and that's actually the whole story we want to tell here in that track. We see Cloud ALM as an independent new product line that allows us to resync ALM processes by positioning it as a new product line and not a successor product. Um, and we recommend it as the go-to platform over time also for all solution manager customers. And then there is still focus run for the service providers, for the large customers, and specifically if you have a large on-prem footprint, perhaps also legacy um, um, Java on-prem, then uh, you might need to complement uh, cloud ALM with focus run. The transition strategy overall can be, uh, I mean, there's a, tr a transition time where you might have different ALM solutions in parallel. Um, and then there will be hopefully a time where ALM, if needed, in combination with Focus Run, takes over the full scope. Yeah? But then there is, there is an intermediate step, perhaps required in your company, where you move first to Cloud ALM for operations. Um, uh, so that, uh, and why would you do that? Because you have less customer efforts for the updates, um, no agent administration efforts, the ease of use is there. We have functional um, um, advancements that we do not have in Solution Manager. It's just the better product for hybrid landscapes compared to Salman. And I think it's prime time for, for that product. For service, we had a, another discussion. We have here um, the CPO for service. Um, there are very few services that we still need to move over. Um, they were on keynote slides of Ulrike. And once that is done, you can also move over um, from SAP Solution Manager, all the service collaboration capabilities and use Cloud ALM for that. Um, and then we have uh, the Cloud ALM for implementation where the situation is a little bit more difficult or a little bit more, we, we need to look at in more detail in it. 
Um, so we are clearly saying for S4HANA on-prem, you have, might have a long logistics or financials uh, implementation. Um, use Solution Manager for that, continue to use it until you're finished and then move to Cloud ALM. Um, then the question is, if that is already done for you, um, how about moving uh, to Cloud ALM right now? And here our recommendation would be um, look at the capability. Standard functionality might not be fully sufficient in 2020 uh, as of now until, let's say, somewhere in 2023. But then we should be good also from the perspectives of the change control test solution documentation. You have seen all the announcements, especially with the Tricentis integration to come in Q1. Yeah? So a couple of more months. And then I would say a lot of customers can actually live with um, the capabilities we have in Cloud ALM compared, with, uh, compared to Sawman. And then we have obviously advanced capabilities, um, especially in charm and solution documentation, down to regulated environments where either we or we together with partners want also to provide capabilities. But this is rather to come in 2024 from the roadmap that Michael will show. Um, this statements around okay, you might need to keep Solution Manager as your corporate ALM solution for implementation does not mean that you cannot do speed or speedboat implementations for specific cloud solutions in a subsidiary um, right now. Yeah? So if you have a success factor somewhere on s public cloud somewhere in large companies, we see that currently so sometimes happening that there is a, a large transformation and then smaller cloud implementations somewhere. Um, for that, um, it is not a bad strategy to use Cloud ALM right away as an ALM competence center in your customer organization. You can gain experience right away with Cloud ALM in a smaller sense, not with the big beast. Um, and then you are already prepared um, for a larger transformation to Cloud ALM to come. For Focus Run, um, as I said, most of the customers will not need Focus Run, but if you have uh, a uh, very large system landscape on-prem, especially in combination with non-ABAP um, uh, legacy on-prem, then there still might be a need to, to use that. However, keep in mind, not necessarily you have to run it. You can also ask SAP to run it in con context of a RISE or HANA Enterprise Cloud contract. Or you can also ask 300 partners to run it for you in context of an outsourcing or AMS strategy. Um, a lot of those partners can run centrally um, a focused run instance for multiple uh, customers. Um, we have entity data here, for example, that have over 4,000 customers already connected to their focused run. And we have roughly 50,000 um, on-prem systems connected in our HANA Enterprise Cloud and RISE um, Cloud, um, on also on one focused run um, instance. All right. Um, yeah, and with that, I would like to hand over to Ben Schneider. He will take us first through a short functional overview, and then he will show stereotypes of typical customer situations that both of us came up with. We thought it's a good um, also learning exercise for us to see, okay, if that is a customer situation, what would you recommend? Over to you. Thank you very much, Mark. Good morning also from my side. Great to be on stage, not as a moderator today, but also as a speaker. Um, so I'm happy to go with you through these um, situations which we just sort of, I want, don't want to say made up, but which we uh, wanted to, to think of over the last weeks when we went into all these discussions on transition to Cloud ALM. I need to go back mentally with you to the second slide, which Mark skipped, which is our legal disclaimer. Um, this just, please keep that in mind. These slides have never been shown before. They I actually, I worked on them uh, until this morning. So some of these things which I'm, talk about, I'm talking about might change. And this is totally normal because also, as, as you know, we, we, we announced Cloud LM two, two or three years ago, but we're still, this whole transition topic, how you can move to Cloud LM is something which is evolving, which is growing, which we also sort of adjust based on feedback we get from customers, based on feedback from partners who do transitions to Cloud Element and so on. So that's just an idea and we, we are going to continually, um, it continues to evolve, evolve that topic over the next, I, I think over the next years basically. So what I would like to take you through um, for the first part of, of, of my part of this session here, um, 
three of those four slides you've most likely seen. Um, they've been in, in our presentations um, already last year, for example. I just wanted to pick them up and um, highlight some of the things more related to a transition focus. And the fourth slide, which is the lower right one, is fairly new from the keynote. I just wanted to take that in again. I'm going to come back to that later on because that sort of summarizes what are our offerings, our planned offerings partially, how we are going to support you with the transition. That's more to, towards the end of that presentation. When we look at the first um, slide, as I said, if you've been with the ALM Summit last year, you've seen that slide maybe. We modified it a little bit, some more blue circles on the left, some more what is it, hexagons in the middle. But the idea of, of, of this whole transition to cloud ALM from the beginning also was that, and I think we repeat that, that over time as well uh, many times, we don't have a list of solution managed functionality on the left hand side and then we try just like to tick off everything um, and sort of just complement what is on solution manager um, to have just the same stuff in the cloud because Cloud LM is not Solution Manager in the cloud, and it is also not that we just rebuild Solution Manager exactly the same in the cloud. What we do with Cloud LM, and I, I think that should be clear to, to most of you um, right now, is that Cloud LM is an ALM solution, which brings the heritage, so to speak, of Solution Manager, the, 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 the knowledge of our experts from the last 20 years, um, into the cloud world with a, with a cloud perspective and also with a cloud mindset, which means, of course, we need ALM for the cloud and we need those use cases, but some of them might be needed differently. Might, uh, some of them we might do differently in cloud ALM and some of them we, don't might, we might not need anymore or we, we need them in, in a different way. So that's also to keep in mind um, for, for, for a transition that it's not just, well, you have your old ALM stuff, old in terms of it's there, and then you have cloud ALM and you do just the same just you log on not to Solution Manager, but you log on to a, maybe a nicer looking UI, but it's, in the end it's the same because it's not. And the idea really is those well-known use cases from Solution Manager, you will find many of them in Cloud ALM. That's sort of the centerpiece of this slide. Yes, we do have a project management in Cloud ALM, but if you have been to sessions um, yesterday, I think it was Jack's session talking about uh, project management, you'll see that this is handled differently. It's because it's another functionality which we need in Cloud ALM, but the whole way of doing projects is different in Cloud ALM than in Solution Manager. But yes, we have project management in Cloud ALM. The same goes for solution documentation. Um, especially that part is there's big movement in here, there's big developments going on in Cloud ALM. In Solution Manager, you have all that nice stuff from, from the solution documentation with the branches and um, all the, 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 the column browser and the different uh, libraries and all these very massive things which, which are important. In Cloud LM, we do it differently. Yes, we do solution documentation in Cloud LM. Yes, there will be data transfer possible in the future from Solomon to Cloud LM. You will learn about that in the next session in this track here, so directly after uh, this one here. Um, but again, it looks differently it, and it's been handled differently. So that's just the mindset I also want to infuse a little bit that we, we need these things, but they will be different. And in those use cases where we said they are um, maybe not our core competence or they are not completely in the scope of Cloud LM, they will be going somewhere else. For example, to the friends of Cloud LM. And um, these are some very simple examples like maintenance of system landscapes. The maintenance planner, famous for many years, um, it's already some sort of cloud application which is somehow linked or embedded into Solution Manager. This is still there and if you have still systems where you need Maintenance Planner 4, you can use that. That's completely independent of, of Cloud ALM in that sense. Or also um, for, for process modeling, we will integrate Signavio which is some sort of third party. Well, now it's SAP so it's our party. But still, this is what we integrate and then, but there's more behind that. So this is also something where you do things differently than you do it in Solution Manager. And this is just something I wanted to pick up again. When you think about a transition, when you think about moving from an existing Solution Manager, which is, for most cases, the transition use case, of course, you could also consider coming from some other ALM or from Excel ALM-based stuff to Cloud ALM, then this would also be some sort of transition. But in this work stream here, we, mo we mostly find or, or focus on transitioning from Solution Manager to Cloud ALM. Um, that things 
are there, things evolve functionally, but things will be handled differently, either from a functional way, how you do it, or also from where you do these things in the future. And that's something which you, from my perspective, need to keep in mind also when you plan your transition accordingly, that you check what you do today, what are my requirements for ALM, and what do I have to, where will I do, will be doing that in the future? And that's where we are going to support you also with information how you work in Cloud LM, where you do things today and tomorrow. That's also something which will be part of this track here today uh, on the ALM Summit um, in the following sessions. Second topic is more, let's say, technical stuff, landscape focus. Mark already said it in the beginning. There's changes in Cloud LM also with which landscapes you can manage with Cloud ALM. And that's something, I don't have to repeat what Mark said, there are changes in, 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 in let's say, maintenance of, of other components. Um, and also, we, we needed to rethink what ALM can do. And that's why some things are supported from Cloud ALM or by Cloud ALM, which is the clear right side. Of course, we support our, our cloud products. That's the core of Cloud ALM. Um, uh, what it needs to do. Um, then, of course, we do have a full commitment for the business suite, all deployments um, from a technical perspective, so you can do all the monitoring and all the management you need to do for, for business suite systems uh, also, and for SAP, SAP S4 HANA systems. And then there's this part in between, if you compare Solution Manager and Cloud ALM, which, which can do both. Um, so Solution Manager, of course, is, is, is famous and well-known for, for on-premise-based stuff, for also managing non-HANA databases, which Cloud ALM cannot do. Um, also for non-ABAP stuff like business objects, um, Java, and other um, uh, stacks which, which we support with Solution Manager, which we do not support with Cloud ALM. And this again, so, and, and there might be details on that slide which, which, which are not fully there yet, which um, might come up, but the important message of this slide here is that you also need to consider that when thinking about the transition, when planning your transition, that SAP Cloud LM has a different scope, so to speak, of technical systems, of solutions which are supported than Solution Manager has. And this is something which also maybe on a larger scale fits into a company-wide transition strategy. If you move from an on-premise focus to cloud focus, then some of these things you might have today might not be there in the future because you may be also getting rid of Java stacks or, or business objects or other things, because this is part of your transition. And that's also something I'd just like to remind you that thinking of which systems are supported by Cloud LM is also part of your transition planning of your strategy, which you need to consider when moving from Solution Manager to Cloud LM. Third one, keep that short. Um, there's also benefits in Cloud ALM. So it's not just a new tool, at least we think it's a nice new tool. And there's, uh, there are some things which, which we think make total sense for, um, for a cloud-centric world. Um, the first bullet point here is, is quite simple, but I think it's, it's very powerful. It's Cloud ALM has a consistent user experience, which means many of you know Solution Manager very well, most likely better than I do, but there are some different UIs in Solution Manager. We have classical UIs, we have CRM web UIs, we have UI5 things in there, and sometimes it's a little bit hard to, uh, that the users always need to switch between these UIs. Cloud ALM has a consistent user interface. It's, I heard from customers talking also to me today, or not today, but uh, at the event, it looks nice which I think is, is important for many people because you want to work with a software which looks nice, which works very well. No agents. This has been repeated throughout the event as well. Um, a non-agent or an agentless concept for, for Cloud LM is essential for us to do things better in, in system handling, in, in operations, than we could do that with Solution Manager. You don't have to install and maintain it in some companies, this is a big thing. Solution Manager is an important box. You need to run that box. You need to have people who focus on just operating the system. There's costs involved in operating that system and so on. This is something you don't have to do when you go to Cloud LM. It's not your business anymore. Um, and of course, new features, we talked about that. There's a lot of new things coming. Um, we're open with Cloud LM to partners, to own extensions, 
we have tried to be or tried to be open with solution manager, but with Cloud LM, I think this is definitely the next step in openness. And something Mark just briefly mentioned is the last one. Um, because we get asked this question, um, yes, there will be phases in your transition where you might run Solution Manager and Cloud ALM in parallel because that's just the nature of the transition. But what we get asked and what we are not planning to do is to, to, to have a, let's say, productized integration between those tools. Focused Run and Cloud ALM, yes, that's what Janko said. Um, we are working on a tighter integration of Focused Run and Cloud ALM because that's what we need for, for some customers who are running Focused Run. For Solution Manager, Yes, we will support you with the transition, moving content from Solution Manager to Cloud ALM, but there will not be a productized integration. Something like you create a business process step in Solman, it will automatically replicate to Cloud ALM, then you attach something in Cloud ALM, it will be visible in Solman. This will not happen. This doesn't make sense. It's highly complex, and it's not part of the strategy. So this is just there because we get, this, we get asked this question. These tools will run together in parallel in, in, in many use cases for some time, but it's not the idea that you sort of run those things for in parallel forever and synchronize all the data. So keep, just to keep that in mind. Now, for, that was sort of the, the first part. And now it's getting a little more interesting also for me because, as I said, these slides have been in motion over the last weeks, what we tried to do is we tried to identify or to write down some typical customer use cases and what we would recommend for these typical use cases um, in terms of transitioning to Cloud ALM. What would you do? When would you do it? And what are some things you might need to think about? I hope that some of you will find yourself in at least one of those typical use cases. Um, if not, please talk to me after the session, then we need to refine that. But um, th this is just like a, a generic approach of what we would say to customers who we see a lot in, in these type of scenarios. And again, if you miss anything, I'm here the whole day, please let me know. If you need to add anything, if we have completely missed something, let me know. Let's start. Um, with a customer who has an on-premise focus. So we have many customers. They say, well, we have an on-premise centric landscape, big or small, but most of the stuff is either in our own data center or it's somewhere, but it's, it's an on-premise focus. So this means your situation today as this type of customer would be, well, you're on-premise centric. Maybe you're using the business suite, ERP, you're, you're still there, you're happy with that, and you're using Solution Manager for implementation and or for operations, in whatever sense, maybe big footprint, maybe just smaller things, but you're using Solman, you're using the business suite, and maybe you're planning to go to S4 until we, we now talk 2028, so end of 27, so this, this type of time frame. I think this is, this, this is a quite, let's say, generic situation for many customers. And the goal in 2028, and this is sort of the, 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 the scheme I will follow over the next slides, having always the situation today, then the situation in 2028. You might be still on-premise centric in 2028, um, but you have completed your transition to S4HANA, and then the, the target of, our, of this situation, also what we would expect and what we recommend is that you're using Cloud ALM for implementation, for operations, and for service. That's basically the story we tell since we started with Cloud ALM. You are on-premise, you're gonna move to S4, maybe also on-premise or any other deployment, in this case on-premise, and then you would use Cloud ALM to do your ALM. That's what we talk about since, since quite some time. So what would be the recommended next steps for this type of customer right now? And the recommended steps, again, this is completely in line and following what, what Mark said in the keynote, what we already said last year. Use Cloud ALM for operations. Start doing that right now. That's, that's the recommendation. And if you're already in the process of your S4 implementation, and you've done that with Solution Manager, you've started with Solution Manager, don't change horses. Do that with Solution Manager, that's what it's there for. And then, 
Also, concerning the time perspective, the functionality in the implementation of Cloud ALM in the use case, you might be ready to use Cloud ALM for implementation after you finished your transition to S4. So that's this phased approach, and I think that's no surprise. Start with Cloud ALM for operations, finish your project with Solution Manager, and then use Cloud ALM for implementation, so use the full functionality of Cloud ALM in the future. Very simple in, 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 in general. Next one is what Mark already said. That's the, what we call the speedboat. So if your company, I don't want to talk too much, Let's, we have it written down. So maybe you're using Solution Manager um, in your company, but at the same time, a business unit is starting to implement a cloud product, like success factors, for example. Um, that's a situation which might happen maybe in larger um, companies, but we have had that, we've heard that from customers that this happens. So the situation today is you're using Solution Manager, you're happy with that, whatever scope and focus you're using, um, but somewhere starts with implementing a cloud product. In 2028, um, the idea still would be that the whole transition is finished, so this, this speedboat of, cloud, of, of implementing a cloud product would be the start, but then the whole transition process uh, behind would go on. So the, the idea of, of that situation would be that you're still in 2028 would be using Cloud ALM for the full scope of ALM, because following the regular strategy of the slide before, moving your whatever system, uh, ERP, to um, to the cloud or to S4, any deployment, you would use Cloud ALM in a, as a general recommendation. But right now, you're still using Solution Manager, and there's this little S S success factors implementation. And today, the recommendation for this, maybe more specific use case, would be, and you'll find that a lot on those slides, start using Cloud ALM for operations and service. That's what we repeat, because that's what Mark said, it's prime time for that scenario. Then use Cloud ALM as a speedboat or for this speedboat situation, to implement success factors, to learn, to, to do upskilling for your team, for your ALM people working in the organization. You can use this little project to, to gain knowledge and to learn how Cloud ALM works. And then you would use Solution Manager continuously until your transition is complete. Remember the slide before. And then check if Cloud ALM for implementation would be ready for you and then sort of start using that maybe one, two, three years after doing the speedboat implementation of, cloud, of, of, of a cloud solution with Cloud LM. So that's, again, already some sort of parallel situation. But the idea is here to make use of that, to gain knowledge from that little, little maybe it's a large one, but from the implementation of a cloud product with Cloud LM at the same time continuing to use Solution Manager until you're ready to sort of switch completely over. I'm getting the 10 minute sign. This will be, hard. It will be tough. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Now, this is maybe the biggest one. Um, and this also might be the one where we get some feedback or questions um, after the session for you. That's all these customers who invested a lot in Solution Manager. I, I'm getting constant feedback and questions. Hey, we just finished our one and a half year, two million euro solution documentation project. We wrote everything down in Solution Manager. It's great. I've now, and I think the question even was here the, uh, f on, on Tuesday, I just started to, to bring my team, to onboard my team onto all of that, and now I have to switch gears again, so what, what's, what's with that? Or I have a large testing um, documentation, I'm doing testing a lot, I've invested. Um, so this is this, the use case where also the recommendation might be a little more generic because things are, let's say, um, in movement, but the situation today would be you're on-premise centric, most likely. You're using Business Suite or already S4. Um, you've invested in either or solution documentation in the test suite, in test automation maybe. Um, maybe even you have a ton of documents in Solution Manager. Um, you have maybe have automated test cases there. So these, these type of things, massive Solomon footprint, a lot of things going on there. Situation in 2028, nevertheless, following our strategy and following the recommendations would be you would be using Cloud ALM as your ALM platform. That's, that's the idea behind that. But still, of course, there might be some more open questions. And we try to work some of these things out. And this is exactly also what the sessions afterwards will maybe go a little more into detail. So what could you do right now in that situation? And again, the recommendation is the same. You can start using Cloud ALM for operations. Again. There's no reason why you shouldn't or could not do that, even in that use case. 
For the implementation, as Mark said, this is, might be a little more challenging in, in the case that the functionality you are used to in Solution Manager might not be there in Cloud LM or the, the things you do are, are differently. So in implementation, you would maybe want to wait for a little longer time before you use Cloud ALM for implementation um, because there's a lot of things going on. Um, what about big chunks of documents in, in, in Solution Manager? We have customers with tens of thousands of documents in Solution Manager and for Cloud ALM with that eight gigabyte of shared space, this is like filling up in a second. So the idea will be in the future to connect other document management services to, to, that, um, to that area in Cloud ALM. For example, um, our own BTP as a, as a document storage, or you can connect SharePoint or um, Google or Amazon. This will be most likely, that's a disclaimer th thing, most likely going through the, uh, some sort of BTP connector um, or, or interface, but the idea is not to store tens of thousands of documents in solution in, in Cloud ALM because you might not need it, because you do the documentation differently, but if you want to do it, you have to do it with a connected um, storage, so to speak. And then the test automation use case, I just discussed this last night with uh, Xavier Duperat. Um, there's a lot of things which are not fully clear yet, but the idea for test automation is um, if you are working with a test automation provider, like a third-party company, who have already integrated their product into Cloud ALM, then it will be relatively easy just to sort of relink those automated test cases into Cloud ALM. If you work with a provider who's not integrated into Cloud LM yet, then you might sort of migrate your test scripts to this third party provider first and then relink that into Cloud LM. So that's very generic and very high level. And these things are also not fully clear yet what exactly will go on, also depending on what the third party vendors will do. So this is, let's say, the scenario which we, which we might also go into more discussions with you um, over the next months and years um, to figure out more of the details. But the general idea, and I need to speed up a little again, is we protect your investments. We will provide ways that you secure your documentation. Um, but at the same time, not only the product from Solomon to Cloud LM changes, but also the way how you work in your cloud environment changes, which means that's also what Mark said in the keynote, rethink your ALM processes. And I think especially in this scenario, it's important to also rethink your ALM uh, processes. Next one, Charm. Um, that's one situation you're maybe in a regulated environment or um, you have a complex change request management setup, complex in whatever sense there is. There's a lot of things out there. Two-tier landscapes, retrofit, digital signatures, all of that. Um, again, this is also disclaimer where here. Um, in the future, we would expect you also with those types of setup to use SAP Cloud LM. That's following the strategy. But there might be some things. So the recommendation here clearly is there will be more stuff coming in Cloud ALM over the next year and more, which means if you are this type of customer, if you are running a complex change request management setup, it would not make sense to move that to Cloud ALM right now because the functionality you expect is not there. But this will change. There will be coming a lot of things. And there are sessions here on the ALM Summit on change management, change deployment with Cloud ALM. So if you're interested in that, Please go there if they haven't run yet. Um, please check out the experts on that topic. But the, the general message here just is, in, in this area, things evolve quickly in Cloud ALM, so please be patient. This is not something you would change right now because it doesn't make sense to do so. Then we have something customers tell us, well, we'll be on premise for longer than 2027. We accept the maintenance things going on. We have a longer strategy, we have maybe whatever going on. And which means you will operate ABAP-based products on premise beyond 2027 for whatever reason. And there might be good reasons to do so. So you would also continue to do so after 2027. This is maybe not a recommended use case, but it might be in reality something which, which exists. So what we can recommend you right now in that scenario if you are in that situation. Nevertheless, check out Cloud ALM. Maybe it can bring advantages over Solution Manager um, for 
operations right now for implementation maybe later. So it might be still valuable for you in that situation as we support hybrid landscapes or partially on-premise landscapes also with Cloud ALM to look at Cloud ALM or Focused Run as another scenario if this something if this fiddles your needs um, in, in, in a scenario, in an on-premise centric scenario beyond 2027. So even if you plan to use massive footprint or have a massive footprint of, of on-premise after 2027, Cloud ALM might be an interesting alternative, but this needs to be sort of analyzed and, and considered if it makes sense for you. Long-term operations of non-ABAP, non-HANA, um, that's the, if you remember the slides with those, well, circles. Um, you, today, you're operating um, non-ABAP, non-HANA products, and you would continue to do so after 2027 for whatever reason. I think the recommendation here is quite similar to what I said before. You could evaluate Focused Run for operations of these products, or even move to a service partner um, in, in that situation, which operates Focused Run. And again, you could evaluate Cloud LM if you, wanna, if you need things which go beyond what Focused Run offers, like business process monitoring or the business service, service management, which are not part of Focused Run. So in that situation, it really depends on what exactly you do. But again, evaluating Cloud LM, at least for some scenarios, might be something you would like to consider. Last but not least, speeding up some more, customers with other ALM solutions, and that's very generic here. And of course, the recommendation will be very generic. If, if you're not using Solman or if you're using something else for doing ALM, um, why not use Cloud ALM in the future? Uh, this is, it's there, it's part of your maintenance contract, it's cool, um, why not using that? So the idea here, and this is very simple in the end, look at Cloud ALM because that's what we can give you to do ALM maybe better than you do it with, a, with another tool or maybe with Excel or with nothing at all. Um, there should be, seem to be customers out there doing not, not doing ALM. And there's APIs in Cloud ALM. So it, there might be vendors who connect to, uh, to Cloud ALM. You can move your data from third party to, to this one. That's something we don't know yet. That's something which will evolve over time. But that's, of course, the idea of openness in Cloud ALM to have that for you. Um, and focused run for operations is always a possible alternative. To summarize, um, I, want, I, I, I took the one slide from those four slides um, uh, to, to the end. So we are going to support you in the transition to Cloud ALM. And um, in these 45 minutes, we just wanted to sort of set the stage. Um, again, in the sessions afterwards in this room, you will learn more about how implementation does these things, how operations will do the, the, the movement or the transition. But there will be a lot of stuff coming. The readiness check will be coming. The fourth session here in this uh, room on, uh, today will be showing screenshots and mock-ups of the readiness check, maybe even live, I, I don't know. Um, but this will be a, a major tool to support and plan your transition. Um, we are working on a methodology. Michael said that in the keynote briefly. That's something which will come. You see the little asterisks, that's not there yet. This stuff is planned, but will come. We have services which guide you, which help you with that transition. There will be tools for data transfer. That's exactly what will be happening or shown by Axel in the next session here in this track. Um, how we plan to help you, and I don't want to say content, uh, how we plan the migration, the transfer from, of data from Solution Manager to Cloud LM in the area of documentation. Um, there's also APIs. I said that already. Um, we, are, we will be working on those typical customer situations which, we, which I just showed, um, maybe in more detail, maybe with more recommendations, maybe with more specific stuff in the future for these situations. And what I'm currently working on is um, I'm, I'm building a, a pages in the support portal um, where we sort of com combine all of that, where we will provide all of this information in some sort of transition um, portal, whatever landing page there will be. But the general message here is use Cloud ALM, look at Cloud ALM, and also use Cloud ALM and this transition to rethink and maybe simplify your ALM processes. I'm going to skip the next slide because I think that's a great end. Um, please rate these sessions which you see, and thank you very much. <laughs>